Hello. So now that I have my walls hatches and the shadows dropped out of my walls or down towards the floor, and I have my flooring patterns done and ready, and hopefully I have pictures of my furniture or the colors of my furniture filled in, I'm going to have to move forward to give it a more realistic feel or give a more uh, understanding of how, this, how the situation is going to be like for this plan if it was implemented in reality. So if you look at the plan, you will see that I have windows on multiple sides and in multiple areas. And I also have some open doors, which all should allow light to penetrate my space. So to do that, I'm gonna start selecting, oh, sorry, I have a, an extra layer right here. I'm just gonna delete it. I'm gonna go to any layer. It doesn't matter what layer you're on. And I'm gonna start with my marquee tool. I either press here, if you have a different shape, of course, you need to long press on it and select a rectangular marquee tool. Alternatively, if you have a different shape than a rectangle, you can use this uh, polygonal lasso tool. Um, if you have corners um, in, in, in the shape, so it's not a complete rectangle. So according to your shape of the space, you need to choose your tool. So right now I have a perfect rectangle. So I'm gonna go for the marquee tool and I'm gonna zoom into the corner and I'm gonna start looking at my spaces individually so that I gain a bit more control. So I'm gonna zoom into this corner, long press with my mouse, I'm still pressing with my mouse and I'm gonna drag this selection to the opposite end of my rectangle. That's gonna take a while because I'm zoomed in a bit too much, just so I can have a more accurate selection. And this is my second end and I'm gonna remove my hand off my mouse button. Now, if you have a non-rectangular shape, you can use this uh, polygonal lasso tool. I'm gonna to press on my shift my, uh, key on my keyboard so that I get this plus sign next to my cursor. That means it's adding to the selection. So I'm gonna start looking at the corners. So I'm gonna press, oops, sorry. I'm gonna press right here at this end and I'm, then I'm gonna remove my hand off the shift button and I will be moving to the other corner. I'm gonna click on this corner right here, go down to the other corner, press right here, the opposite corner as well, press right here. And then if I double click here, it will automatically close my selection or my shape. I'm gonna go back to my uh, square tool just because it's faster for this shape, to, sorry, to my um, marquee tool. And I'm going to click on shift so that it adds to the selection and does not restart the selection. And I'm going to long press with my mouse right here. Right now, I'm still pressing with my right hand on my mouse button, but I removed my hand from the shift button just so I can easily or I can control the movement of uh, my scroll, my scrolling movement. So it's not too much and too fast for me. Right now, I'm going to remove my hand from my mouse and I have all my spaces selected. Now I'm going to go to this um, uh, icon that has the half white, half gray circle, which is an adjustment or a new fill layer. So I'm going to press here and I'm going to choose levels. So that allows me to control the uh, levels at which the colors are shown. So if I move this white place towards the dark place, you can see how my spaces are getting darker. And this effect is only taking place in my selection area and that's why I made that selection. So notice how these spaces that were not selected do not have that effect on them. So I'm gonna make it slightly darker, not too dark. It's just slightly darker and you'll see the difference in a minute. So I'm gonna start playing around with my cursors and with my options until I find that this is shaded enough. So now I'm playing with the shaded part. Now, once I'm done, there's nothing I need to press but I need to light the areas where light is coming from. So for instance, I have this window that allows light to pass into the space, say in this direction. And I have this window that allows the light to pass. And I have an open door here and an open door here and there. And of course I have these two windows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my polygonal lasso tool, make sure that I am on this uh, layer and start selecting the edges from the corner of my, um, of my window, it's just a short click, short press. And right now we can see that the shadows are going in this direction. So I can start looking at the shadows. Now in this case, because this is a middle window, it's gonna allow light to be dispersed into the space or it can allow light to go there. And that depends on where my shadows 
were chosen to be. So obviously looking at the shadows, the light is coming from this direction. So my shadow or my light is gonna go in the same direction. Now, how deep this is depends on how the location of the sun, so where the location of the object is, and what time of day and what season this place, where this um, shot was taken. Uh, this has to do with the location of the sun. So we're going to assume that it's going to end here. I'm going to press on shift key right now, just so I make sure I am uh, parallel to either the X axis or the Y axis. So it's restricting the angles of my movement. So it's not like a, a crooked line or sorry, and an, an, a non-parallel line to the X axis. So once I do that, I'm just going to click right here. And now I'm removing my hand off the shift key and I will place my second point to be right there. And then afterwards, it doesn't really matter because I don't have any shaded items. If I double click anywhere, it will automatically close my space. So notice how this selected area is any changes that I'm going to do are going to take effect in the selected area and only on this layer. So only this part of the layer. So now I'm going to go to my brush. Now, with the levels, the brush works oppositely. So if you have black color, that means you're add, you're removing this part of the of um, of the layer from whatever uh, effect you have. So right now we have levels. So if I make sure that I have a large uh, brush, I make sure that it's not very opaque and it's not very transparent either. The flow can change. The flow is how. Um, the flow of your brush is going to be. So right now I can start on erasing and notice how this part of the levels is now erased. It's as if I'm erasing this shaded part. If I press on Control D or Command D, depending on what type you're using, it literally looks like it's a, it's a light effect. But given that this is a natural light, it's normally not that sharp unless it's really dark on the side and we don't want it to look like it's dark. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I choose a brush that has um, a diffuse effect on the side. So it's not a sharp edge, but rather it gradually uh, disappears. It's relatively big. I'm going to move the flow from 100 to say maybe 48 or maybe 50. We'll see how it looks like. And opacity right now is 58. We'll keep the opacity to 85 and see how it looks. And notice how when I start erasing, it gradually disappears right now. So I don't want that sharp edge of the shadow because simply it's not really realistic. I'm going to go over these edges so that it looks a bit more realistic. So now you can see that there is a spot of light penetrating the space. Now, if you think that you want it to be darker, then please feel free to change these settings. So I'm gonna control Z now or command Z, and you can easily change these settings by changing the size of the brush. So if you want it to be smaller, you can start just um, make it a little bit less apparent right here. You can go over it as much as you want. Now, obviously the sides are normally more um, more defined than the front because right here it should disperse more. So right here I'm going to make it again a bigger brush and I'm going to start erasing this edge more. I'm going to have the flow slightly more or maybe less and the opacity is a little bit less so that I give it a more gradient disappearing light right over here. Of course you're free to play around with the size of the brush with the uh, flow until you find the effect that uh, you think fits your space the most. I'm gonna do this for all my uh, windows. So right here, it's right here. And we said that the light is coming from this direction. So it's gonna be parallel to this one, more or less. It's gonna be in this direction. And I'm gonna activate my brush again, and I'm gonna start erasing. I'm gonna take back the opacity to 85, the flow to 100, and then you can see that my space looks a bit more lit. I'm going to reduce the flow a bit more, not much more, and I'm going to start erasing right here. Maybe reduce the size a little bit more and start. I don't want the shadow to completely disappear, but I want it to be less apparent or less um, defined on the edges. Okay, 
And next is I'm gonna make it slightly bigger, change the flow and the opacity play around with these until I find the proper uh, effect of light. So right here, the flow maybe a little bit more, oh, sorry, a little bit less than not more. And then you start seeing this gradient effect on um, the shadow that we have right here. So next is the doors. Obviously the doors are allowing a bit light. So I'm gonna go here and slightly lighten it right here. Maybe I'll have a bit more flow, less opacity and start playing around with my lights just so I give it a bit more feel right here. And then again, since I have two windows close to each other, this area is obviously lit, So, but it's not as lit as the area that is directly under the window. So I'm just gonna slightly touch upon these shadows and right here a little bit. And of course I have a window here where I have to start working on its light and shadow. And I need to be working on all the windows and all the doors that I have, just so I can give it a bit more of a realistic feel. Now, right here, we don't have direct sunlight coming in. So it's gonna be more of a, an ambient light. So it's gonna look like this. And I'm gonna go back to my brush again. This time, I'm not gonna make the light such as apparent as this one. So the opacity is gonna be a little bit more. And so will the flow be reduced. And I will start looking into my space like so. Maybe a little bit more. And then I'm gonna start slightly uh, change the flow and the opacity until I find a seamless transition between um, between my light under the window and towards the space, to the rest of the space. So it's less defined than what it looks like here. So I'm gonna keep on playing with it until I find that my space looks, it has this seamless transition between the lit spaces. And you see here, we have some dark spaces at the edge, but this window will come in and it will change everything. So please feel free to play around. Um, don't be afraid to make it too dark or too light and then start playing uh, with your shade and shadow right over there. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how we add shadows to the furniture units that drop their shadows into the floor.